Hello, and welcome to the Newcastle upon Tyne Bach Choir's first online concert. This last year has been an unusual one for the choir. Founded over a century ago in 1915, even the ravages of two world wars only halted the choir's activities briefly in the 1940s. But of course, for the last 12 months, we've been unable to rehearse in person and have been forced to meet over Zoom. This was a steep learning curve for us all. Members have to mute while they sing and so cannot hear each other, relying on just the piano or backing tracks during rehearsals. One of our tenors, John Paul Hardy, has done a fabulous job in knitting together nearly 300 individual recordings, allowing us to re release this concert as part of Newcastle University's Early Music at Newcastle programme of events. The music we are singing here reflects our activities over the last six months. In October, we began preparations for our annual concert of Christmas music, which of course eventually had to be cancelled. So we start here with four Christmas motets. First is Omanium Mysterium by Spain's most famous Renaissance composer Victoria, taken from his first published collection of 1572 during the period that he was working in Rome. Although written in a largely meditative mood appropriate for a text reflecting on the mystery of the nativity, it has a short, lively alluia section in triple time near the end. Hans Leo Hassler was born in Nuremberg and studied under Andrea Gabrielli in Venice before returning to Germany in 1586, where he held appointments at Augsburg, Nuremberg and Dresden. Dixit Maria comes from Hassler's first published collection of sacred music and is written in the secular style of a chanson or canzona rather than a motet. Jakob Handel, also known as Jakob Gallus, worked for a while in the beautiful Melk Abbey on the Danube in Austria, eventually settling in Prague. His short, energetic motet Resonet in Laudibus, Let the Voice of Praise Resound, of which there are several different versions, is based on the famous German carol tune dating from the 14th century, Josef Lieber, Josef Mein. Our final Christmas piece is by Richard Deering, who studied at Christ Church, Oxford, and, like Hassler, travelled to Italy, apparently arriving in 1612 and visiting Venice and Rome. He became strongly influenced by Italian musical styles and converted to Catholicism. The six-part Quem Vidicis Pastores was published in 1618 and describes the shepherds visiting the manger. Like the Victoria, it has a short, lively triple-time section and ends with jubilant alleluias.
In Bach's time, motets were often sung as introits for services and on special occasions, and a number of Johann Sebastian's motets were probably written for burial services of eminent people as part of his duties as cantor at Leipzig. As was traditionally the case, the texts are generally based on biblical quotations and chorales. Seven motets by Bach survive. Because of the special nature of the services at which the motets were sung, Bach probably had more singers than usual at his disposal, and several of the works are in eight parts, the singers being divided into two equal choirs. Lobertdain Heron, however, is actually in four parts, with a separate bass line for organ, and is a setting of Psalm 117. It wasn't published until 1821, and its authenticity has been in doubt for some time. Whether or not it is actually by Bach, its approach to the text is similar to that of the other motets. Its vigorous opening fugue is followed by a gentler, more chordal middle section before the final jubilant triple-time Alleluia.
end our concert with works by two composers who were strongly influenced by Bach. Around 1824, Mendelssohn's maternal grandmother, Bella Salomon, presented him with a gift that was to alter the course of his life, a copyist's manuscript score of Bach's St Matthew Passion, and he conceived the idea of preparing the entire Passion for performance, conducting it at the Berlin Zing Academy in March 1829. Mendelssohn published many pieces of sacred music for single and double choir. Both the Kyrie in A major and Heilig are in eight parts and were composed in 1846 as part of a larger setting of the German liturgy. Heilig begins with repeated cries of Heilig, holy, which gradually move down from first sopranos to second basses in a marvellous crescendo. Again, the work involves antiphonal imitation between the two choirs, with strong rhythmic declamation of the text, particularly Hosianna in der Herr, Hosanna in the Highest. James Macmillan's Strathclyde motets, a series of 14 communion motets, were written between 2005 and 2010 for performances by the Strathclyde University Chamber Choir and other amateur groups. The fine Advent motet O Radiant Dawn was first performed in 2007. Its opening chordal textures and breath-length phrases have a feel of the chorale about them, while its decorative grace notes are reminiscent of traditional Celtic music, a strong influence on many of Macmillan's works. Thank you. 